Gibson is now open late. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. And we're kicking it off strong with Jaded Burst for a pretty fair $5,000. That's the base level starting point of a Les Paul Custom. But it's a really dark blue color with a black border. It really reminds me of the Phantom Les Paul that we had documented in this episode, but dialed down a notch because we don't have the matching color over the binding. And it's just so dark and gorgeous. Ah, man. I missed this on launch day. You can actually still see the wood grain, at least on the blue portion. But now check out that headstock again. This just reminds me of like late night Taco Bell ads. Hey, we're open late neon sign going on. Normally, I don't think I'd be a big fan of these kind of splotchy bursts on the headstock and just having like a little bit of an edge, but this works incredibly well, even with the regular Mother of Pearl logos, because these now match the perfect white binding. Although I do feel black tuner tips would complement the finish pretty good. Then to continue the fun, they did all the burst job on the back, I would assume the sides. Looks like they decided to paint our back plate as well. And yep, we can see the wood grain back here. Man, I regret not being at my computer for launch this week. I would have definitely picked this thing up for documenting. Cause look, we've even got the T-type pickups in there. You don't find that in the customs as often. The weight's not too bad. 5,000 was a great deal on that. Now we've got one for you lefties out there. It's a Les Paul Jr. called Burnt Orange Satin for 1800 bucks, And it's kind of weird. You've got a few things going on here. So in the SJ200 world, when you have a double pit guard that's just cruise control for cool, they decided to put that on the Les Paul Jr. But at the same time, it's not just them slapping two guards on it. It's actually something custom made to look like they just kind of were blended together here. But at the same time, it almost makes like a spade. And then they've got the whole kind of country western theme going on with obnoxious cream everywhere, especially those knobs. They look like little candies. And who knows, maybe you, the righty, would actually fall in love with it. Because this thing would look awesome as a double cut, you know, like 1963 Melody Maker style. You just might have to move your controls somehow. As far as the headstock, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Usually it's Les Paul model, but since it's a left-handed, it's got to be reversed, and then your model designation underneath the Les Paul also gets reversed. And we get the continuation of the creaming effect. Then the back got its matching finish to the top. But oh no, we're going to lose some style points here. They didn't put a cream backplate cover. Naughty mod collection. So that's pretty reasonable for a highly modified lefty. But here's another one I was personally a big fan of. It's regular Les Paul standard 50s, but the P90 variation in smooth peat. It's 2800 bucks and it looks like somebody doesn't know how to apply staining evenly, but it kind of works. It's got its own quirks and characters to it, and maybe it looks a little bit more even in person, and it's just the wood reflecting at strange angles, but you get a little bit of brown, but then it lightens up, maybe a little bit of gold here, golden knobs. The cream plastics in this case just look incredibly whited out. Besides the satin refinish, the headstock was left alone. And the wood grain on the back is very comforting. That's a cool piece and still available at the time of recording. But get ready, racing fans. It's the British Racing Red version of that guitar we just talked about. This time for 3100, they put a stripe, and they put the old HP UFO style knobs on here. Red switch tip, looks like chromed out P90 covers. It's just a little bit hard to see. Just slap yourself an iron cross on there and you're almost to an official Gibson signature iron cross James Etfield, just in a new color. What is that? Are those tiny little black Grover-like tuning pegs. I know PRS just came out with these big honking ones, which honestly I can understand. They're probably easier to use, but it appears the mod collection wants to go in the opposite direction. But oh, hey, <laughs> nice touch. I don't like the colors back here, but another racing stripe. Okay, cool. And that's some good wood grain. And I dig the side profile. The red, the natural, and the darker mahogany really works well. But ooh, slow week. No one was interested in that at a small premium. But our next one has too many silent letters in it. Thalo Blue, short for Thalocyanine, pertaining to someone's niche hobby that works at the Gibson Mod Collection. But for us laymen, um, it's blue. It's actually quite striking. There are some 80s explorers in a similar finish, known as Bahama Blue. 
There's also a Bahama Blue Sparkle. I've personally always thought those were really cool with the black plastics. Occasionally, you can also find it on a Les Paul Standard. I would love to find a Bahama Custom, though. That would be a forever keeper guitar. But anyways, back to our current blue boy. This has an interesting blend of black and white plastics. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with our regular headstock and completely refinished back of the neck. However, does this look more blue to you guys in this area too? And like a little bit on the headstock? And it appears to be a satin finish, but that looks like one of those really nice ones that's kind of glossy at the same time. But this one sold fast at 3100 But this had me excited, Ornamental Ivy. We had actually reviewed and documented this. This is part of the custom color series, so the finish is not necessarily special. But, whoa, okay. I was wrong. Another one I didn't click on on launch day. <laughs> this one has exceptional wood grain. Like, it's not figure dancey like the one that we had documented, but it's like extra heavy, tight wood grain. But now if you look at it in here, it's got like a little bit of gold sparkle within it. Although looking at it, it just looks like it's actual glitter rather than like metallic flake sprayed on top. Kind of reminds me of the St. Patrick's Day SG that we documented a couple of years ago. Shocked that they didn't at least give the sparkle coat in the headstock as well, but you've got your white truss rod cover. But how's the back? Yep, looks like it all has the golden sparkle flake. But our next one's actually a custom shop. They called it Nine Pin Alley. So for 4,800 bucks, what are we getting here? Looks like a red 56 reissue. When I think Nine Pin Alley, <laughs> hear me out guys. This would be the dumbest Les Paul to ever exist, but let's have a white with the red stripe and make it a bowling pin. That's hilarious. I would like that guitar. I mean, we've got the bowling ball colors, Brunswick sparkles. Why can't we have the bowling pin? But let's see what else they got going on here. Maybe there's like a little bit of a golden hint to this finish, but everything else seems to be about the same. Still a natural back, so they didn't mess with that. We've got our doofy historic low Gibson logo, and to match with that really crooked Les Paul model silkscreen. I guess while we're pointing stuff up, the historic ones have their truss rod covers all jacked up and... Some things are historic, other things are mistakes. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between the two. It's endearing, I like it, in a weird factory messed up kind of way. Oh, would you read that? It weighs an estimated nine pounds. But all these other ones just say it weighs exactly that. So now I'm curious, did they forget to weigh this one? Or has Gibson finally been hit by somebody that says, hey, you said this weighs 9.15 pounds in your ad, but it really weighs 9.2 pounds. That is a real struggle because not everybody's scales are calibrated exactly the same. But usually that's not a big issue unless you're saying, hey, this thing weighs Goldilocks 7.5 pounds, not chambered, fully solid, and then you get it and it's 9.5 pounds like all the other ones. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Then to round out the USA side, we've got Baked Pomegranate. It's a 339. It's a satin finish. It's got the zebra bobbin pickups. Not the most exciting thing in the world. But if you don't know what a 339 is, think Les Paul sized 335 and you're about there. We reviewed a Joan Jett signature one a long time ago. If you want to see one up close and personal in my style. For this one, they matched the back and had the neck be black and it's still available. However, now we need to kick it over to the European mod collection. They did it, my friends. They sold a guitar at launch. It's a Les Paul standard 60s figure top. What? There's no way this was a figure top. But anyways, they called it Formula Gold Top Gloss, where we get a slightly different racing stripe that the USA side saw. But I would say this color is more my style. There's somebody in the comments keeps saying, do gold tops, do gold tops. Honestly, I'm just not that big of a fan of gold tops. I understand the appeal, like they don't photograph well and it's in person when you get to see the shadows and all that other good stuff. And that's not to say we haven't documented any goldies in the past. I just don't have any gold tops planned in the near future. <laughs> I'm sorry, commenter. However, I was questioning the flame top status. It must not have been that good of a flame top if they covered it over, but it does have the red back, so that makes me think, yeah, it probably was a flame top model, as the current goldies do not come in red backs. Yeah, you can see it. The gold sticks up a little bit proud as compared to the rest of the other finishing right there. You can see the flame and the thin binding in the cutaway. That's gonna look really cool as your arm wears through the finish, but it's so imperial looking with the red and gold. And then I really appreciated the name of this one, Disco Peach Sparkle. 
It was for 3,200 euro. It's peachy and it's sparkly, and I bet it looks fantastic. Fantastic in person. Although it almost kind of has a historic look to it with the black plastics, kind of like some of the gold tops that just happen to have those. An interesting choice to leave the back alone. Sparkle tops with natural backs are always looking good, even a little bit of figuring within our body. And lastly, more aliens this week. Green sparkle slime. Ooh, okay. Hear me out, Gibson. It's a little bit cheeky, but let's do a slimy green sparkle guitar with an orange headstock. Yeah, now that'd be cool. Or if you don't want to get sued, maybe just make the tuner tips that color or something. But it's quite the vibrant shade of green. We've been getting a lot of this hue lately, which I'm fine with, but I'm one of the few people that actually like green guitars. But whoa, 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 okay. Extended green stinger. Not too shabby. You can't go wrong with the 57 classic pickups. But staying on that side of the world, the demo shops. Absolute disappointments. No uploads at all. UK and the Netherlands taking a break or they just didn't have anything to do. But have no fear, the homeland has some interesting things to talk about. First off, here you go. You can stop sending me messages. <laughs> I reviewed both the 50s and the 60s Dark Purple Burst Les Paul Standard. It's a Gibson.com exclusive. And in the comments, people are always going, I wonder what it would look like with black hardware or all blacked out. Here's your answer. In my opinion, I, I, I think it looks better with the stock cream because the creamy plastics bring out the purple finish a little bit better. It lightens up the mood. However, if you're going for spooky guitar month, yeah, I could see how blacking it out like this would be good. However, I think most people just wanted to put speed knobs, not the reflectors, and change the plastics, not necessarily the hardware. But if you're going to do this anyway, you might as well get 600 so schmackaroonies off the price. And oh, cool. Nice touch. The black and chrome treatment for our tuners. It's got a ding by the setup area, but otherwise an okay top. Along a similar vein, we had a triple A 50 standard in the bourbon burst. It was for 2,700. Again, the black plastics makes the finish look completely different. I like the flame top, but I don't necessarily agree with it being one of their super fine triple A's. Like it's fantastic. I would gladly own this guitar, but not, not the craziest we've ever seen. But check them pickups, P94s, making it a little bit more unique. And a red back. Here's another one from the custom color series. I saved it simply because that's $800 off. A relatively new finish. This one's really blue. Like sometimes the purple is way more apparent. So if you're after blue Les Paul Peace vibes, this one is pretty close in that department. Nice dark blue back too. This one I mistook as a Gibson USA product. No, it's a custom shop 59 reissue, believe it or not. Just no pick guard, big speed B5, black plastics. <sighs> For me, the R9 is all about the cream plastics. It just looks the best in my mind. And I've never been a big fan of the B5 Bigsby on an LP. But there are some famous bursts with them, so maybe you associate the burst with that. This is the perfect guitar for someone. But no, 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 why? I take it back, nobody wants this thing. <laughs> they ream the headstock for modern Clusons. I mean, at least it's $1,000 off. Here's one of the Adam Jones standards, which is not discontinued in case you missed that. This one was thrown into the shop because of this. Now I know that looks really, really scary. However, that's probably the worst it's ever going to look. You have to get it in that specific position with the light and inspect it. That's just the seam line. That one doesn't look like it's separating or anything bad, but being overly visible is a cosmetic defect. Then this TV special sold really quick. And the reason for that, I think, is because this finish, there's one of two things happening here. It got sprayed a little bit too dark, or I think some red accidentally bled into this finish. Either way, it actually looks pretty good. And if you don't care for the cream plastics over the pickups, yeah, it'd be pretty easy to swap out. I suppose option number three is the mahogany underneath is a really red color. Or maybe they sprayed over one of the cherry ones with the TV yellow finish. There's many a different things you could hypothesize happened to this. But if you like P94s and that last finish just was not for you, we've got one of the standard 60s dressed up as the old version of the Les Paul Modern. That sparkling burgundy finish, that's actually pretty cool. Custom color, custom pickups, custom look with the natural back yet. All right, chocolateites, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.
If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.